Today, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news, we are well on our way to replacing fossil fuels with renewable energy. The bad news, we need to be going about 10 times faster if we had to have any real chance of limiting global heating to two degrees above the pre-industrial. Right now, and despite all the talk, we're on track for a world that will be three or four degrees warmer by 2100 on average. And because that's an average, it means some countries will be eight, nine, 10 degrees warmer. Should we let this happen, the economic, social, and environmental consequences will be overwhelming for most people, regions, and systems. Many more plants and animal species will become extinct, and the ecosystems we rely on increasingly will break down. So too might global peace and security. This is why our young people are finding their voices and protesting and demanding change. And it's amazing to see young people using their voices in this way, wanting to have a new social climate justice movement. I haven't, I've worked in climate change for 30 years at the International Energy Agency, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, UN Climate Change Secretariat, and I have never seen anything like this before. It's amazing. But we can be even smarter in telling governments precisely what we want them to do next and getting them to listen. People shout at system change, not climate change. But what is that and how can it be done? Well, imagine if one day we looked up in the sky and there truly were hostile aliens hovering above our heads. That would change the system. We would cooperate and we would act. So how do we change the system? The answer is a global project to rapidly replace fossil fuels with a level of intent and cooperation as if aliens had arrived, and it can be done. Here are my six steps for such a project. Step one, we've got to stop wasting energy. We could power two extra planets on the energy we waste each and every day. One extra planet from the energy we waste in power stations and the other extra planet from the energy we waste because of the poor design of buildings, transportation systems and appliances. Three quarters of the energy in a car's fuel tank is simply wasted as heat. Um, even our modern gas-fired power stations, they still waste 50% of the gas that they use. It is possible to halve world energy consumption within two decades. We can move to renewable energy, get smarter on behavioral change, and design those transportation systems, buildings, and appliances better. Um, without losing the convenience and the comforts we're used to, if we look at LED lighting systems, they are revolutionary and they, they show the way. Um, and this is extremely useful for the one billion people in the world that still don't have access to mains electricity, or the two and a half billion people in the world that are using open stoves to cook with, using cattle dung and wood, or the two extra billion people who will be joining us by 2050. And when we dream of a sustainable society, um, it's often electric. So we've got to stop wasting electricity in particular. We've forgotten how magically sublime this most useful fuel is. Very soon, our national electricity grids have, will have to be five times bigger. And our gas grids are going to evolve too, carrying clean burning hydrogen, again generated from renewable electricity. The reason we waste so much electricity is because energy is too cheap. Prices are key to determining behavior and long-term investment decisions. We need to raise the price of fossil fuels so that the polluter pays until it hurts the polluter and not the climate. We can, governments can introduce now a global carbon tax of $100 per ton of CO2 
quickly rising to $500 per ton of CO2 immediately. This will have an effect of giving clear signals to the markets and nobody can cheat the system. And with the money that governments raise from that carbon tax, we can fund energy efficiency, renewable energy, and forestry up to the tune of $3 trillion a year. That's about double what we spend currently on energy or about double the annual world's defense expenditure. And step three, we can make public transport free. Our private car culture has devastating impacts for the planet and the environment even if the cars are electric. We can change the travel habits of every generation to come by investing in safe walking and cycling and making public transport free. It's not driverless cars that we want, it's less drivers and less cars. And we've got to reduce our flying. A flight is the single largest, most rapid belch of greenhouse gas emissions you will make in your annual carbon footprint by far. One business class long haul flight will warm the planet as much as the whole of your yearly flexitarian diet. Surely it's not beyond our imagination to think of other ways of impressing our friends and having fun. I haven't flown, flown for 13 years, and yes, I do miss many aspects, but no, I've had a lot of fun spending my time and energy in other ways. We should fly only as a last resort and invest the money we save on kerosene uh, in more, 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 more detailed ways of connecting with other people and other places. Step four, we should just quit buying a lot of stuff. We don't need half the stuff that we're encouraged to buy in the first place. The clothes and the shoes that last very, for, for a very small amount of time, the extra electronics with built-in obsolescence, the cheap furniture, and all that plastic. And all that stuff takes energy to make in the first place, and it causes problems at the end of its life. And we can just ban stuff. In Europe, we banned the incandescent light bulb, and we can all still see each other. New buildings do not need gas boilers. They just need to be built better. So we should ban those. Several nations have announced a ban on the future sale of gasoline and, and uh, diesel-powered cars. These are a good thing. These should be extended and brought forwards. Step five. We should shift to a planetary diet. One billion people are obese. One billion people are malnourished. We can stop this food madness. We can shift to a diet which is rich in grain and vegetables and where grass-fed sustainable meat is a treat. And if the carbon tax system is applied to the protein and dairy production, we might see global grazing stocks fall by as much as 80%. Now, that might be a good thing, because that's responsible for 15% of global emissions. And with the farm, with the land that's released, we can refarm, rewild, and reforest, but above all, refarm our grasslands back to sustainability and biodiversity. Step six, we need to keep shouting. We need to give our political leaders the courage to make bold decisions. The youth climate justice movement can be even smarter in directing its political energies to the things that make the biggest difference. Above all, we must be clear in what we're asking of our political leaders when we protest, and that we want to see a transition to a new political economy which makes fossil fuel history and renewable energy the future. So it is possible to vividly imagine our descent to net zero green economies. Here are six steps to rapidly decarbonize the system. System change can be fun. It can be good for us. It doesn't need to be politically daunting or so difficult to imagine if we just break it down, find the pinch points, and target the steps. So I know what some of you may be thinking. How can we afford to do this? Well, how can we afford not to? Living in a three or four degrees warmer world would be far more dangerous, costly, and disruptive than any of the short-term costs or inconveniences of taking these six steps. We should wish ourselves the very best of luck. Thank you.